look at how to use Surfer to grid up some data. So you search here for Surfer. Sorry, can't tell. Click on Surfer. And then the software uh, loads. I'm busy with a free trial. And so this window comes up here. So we're going to click here on um, New Workbook because we need to load in some data. Okay, and so this is the layout. Here's our workbook here. And there's a whole bunch of menus at the top. And you can see here we've got the data tab that's currently open. And we're going to go to the first icon, click on open data. Now I've given you a CSV file. Let's find it. So this combine.csv, it's just a combination of the north, south, and east, west lines. So when I click on it, this loads up. You can see the first column is the line numbers. Then you've got X and Y. It's actually in latitude, longitude, so geographic coordinate system. Diurnal here is the diurnal, diurnally corrected magnetic data. And then X and Y here are in UTM coordinate system, so they're in meters instead of degrees. Okay, now we're going to use these to create a grid. And so let me try and remember how we do it. I think we go to here. So you go to the Home tab and click on Grid Data. So now I'm giving you this gridding window. And so we're going to click here on the left-hand side. We're going to use Minimum Curvature. That's the, often the, a very common used method when you're doing potential field data like magnetic. And on the right hand side you're under data set, you've got to find this data set. So you can see on your list you'll probably just have one. You're going to click on combined. And your X column, you're going to click here on X UTM35, Y column, Y UTM35, and your Z column is this diurnal. And you're going to click next. And everything here you can leave is probably uh, maximum residuals. Yeah, I'll leave the default for now. And click. It just takes a bit of time to load here. And this is a, it says cross validation. Maybe I'll pause to let it down. Okay, and here's a plot over here. I'm not 100% sure. So I click um, finish. And I've already got this grid, so I'm going to replace mine. And then this data report comes up here, you just go wait for it to get to the end, click OK, I usually close it, I don't honestly save it. Okay, and we've created this grid, so now we want to plot this grid, so go back to home, and let's just see, sorry, um, let me pause and just remember. Okay, and then this is a bit of a weird part here, like to me you should be able to now go and plot this grid, but you actually have to create a plot window. So you go File, New, Plot Document. And so you can see here, okay, the Sheets 1 is not important. I'm going to close it. So the CSV is the CSV file, and then Plot is where I'm going to plot it. And only once I open up this window do these plotting options up here become available. So I'm under the Home tab, and I go here to Con Color Relief. And I find the grid file that I've just created. You can see here under type it says surfer grid. And I double click on it. And you can see it loads on the screen. And it's very boring colors. And so you can see on the left hand side here. This is, excuse me, the grid file here. And these are the different axes if you want to edit them. But as soon as I click on the grid file, there's a whole bunch of options below. One of them is what color scale or color map is being used. And at the moment we've got the terrain one, which is good if you're using topography, but this is not topography, this is magnetic data. And so you would want to go down here to rainbow. And you can see it's changed it, but it's all red. And the reason is that you've got very small, very big, I think it's actually very small values in these points here. You can see this grid has actually been color shaded. I think it's here because it says hill shaded. If you change that to color only, um, you can see the shading is gone. It's no longer color shaded. Um, but you can see here there's a very low value here. And that's kind of masking all the other features. You're just seeing this very big low here. And most likely this is a bad data point. And so we're going to change the color bar so that it ignores this. And it focuses on the real data. But let's go back. I like shading. Here's a, what is reflectance? It's a uh, grayscale. So going back to hill shaded. And now we want to change 
the maximum and minimum values of this color scale and how you do that is clicking on these three dots and so you can see here this shows us where is our data so here's your color bar it's going from purple to red but over here in this histogram above your data the, the bulk of the data is only here by this red so we're missing out on so much and so i think we can tap here can you tap i can't really um and down here can you tap so let's see if i drag this okay this is an up down thing i just know yeah so you're gonna have to take my word for it but if you make this zero and this 200 you can see it's really focusing in now on the actual data you can probably adjust it even more if i click apply what you can see here is that we're really focusing in on the circular feature and this is the kimberlite let's quickly just try i mean i don't know what these values are it could be quite a bit of playing around let's see what 50 is maybe that's too much 40. i want to get before this peak value and then a bit after this might be too much so okay let's do 90. let's just see what it looks like yeah so i mean you can see it's changed but the main thing is now this whole maximum area is becoming pink here which doesn't give us much detail so let's go back to the 0 200 you can see a little bit more detail um, i just want to see if we make this 300. okay so you can play around here but it's starting to highlight to you that instead of this whole area being red and then you think oh this whole area's got a big value can see it's actually only the smaller feature here that has the largest value and um, i wonder let's just quickly try i mean it's really the you can see these three maximum points here i mean you can play around with color scale but there's something else i wanted to show you first so i would say save your project now um, i've already got this project so i'm just going to call it put a number two after it you can see the project name is uh, the extension is srf Okay, so now it's really great to see your data here, but you don't know what the different values are. So let's just check. Um, we need a color bar. So when I click back here on this grid under this left-hand menu, you can see there's the, the show color scale is unticked. So when I click on it, you can see it loads it over here. So now it's great. We can see what our different values are. Something else you really need is you need data points because why the heck is this region up here blue maybe something there's some anomaly here or maybe there's just no data here so you need to plot your data points to know where you can believe the data and where it may it doesn't exist and so how you do that is you go to this post option click on post and you go and you double click on this the original csv file with the data so it plots the data points and you can see here what it does is you've now got this separate grid here of data points but it's got these weird axes that in no way correspond with the axes of the data. And it's because it's looking at the wrong columns. And so on the left hand side, you can see no longer have you just got your grid, you've now got the CSV file as these uh, the data points. And if you go bottom left here, it's using the A column, which is the line number, and the B column, which is the longitude value, I think it was. So we need to go here and change this to XUTM, and that's the message and y utm and you can see this makes way more sense look at all of these data points um but like, it's quite hard to figure out where to overlay them i mean you really could but there's a way easier way to do it so when this left hand um, data points are highlighted i hold down shift on the keyboard and i click on the grid oh that didn't work so the main aim is I'm trying to get both of them highlighted. And so you do that by clicking on one, hold down shift, and then clicking on the other. And then go right click. And let me just see where it is. Maybe it's not here. You go here to map tools. I suppose where it was. Map tools. And you click on overlay maps. And it overlays it for you. And so this is great. You can see where the real data is. And we can believe these data points here. But these blues are or nothing because there's no data here so yeah this is how you plot up your data and you can click save you can also do a 3d surface so if you click here under home and you go to 3d surface and you choose a grid file 
it prints it for you in 3D. And again, you can go here and change the color bar and change the values that you're using. Sorry. Okay, and I can, sh is there somewhere to show the color bar? There we are, it shows on the side. And the one thing I couldn't figure out though the other day is how to change the vertical exaggeration and how to rotate this. Let's just see if we click on here. No, let's make it bigger. Uh, possibly here, you can see this green dot. No, I think it might help rotate it. Sorry, I'm not using a plugin mouse. I don't know if that will um, alter it. Anyway, but you should be able to rotate it. You can play around with that. Um, click, click, drag. Okay. But you also somewhere should be able to change the vertical exaggeration so it makes it um, bigger. The anomaly is bigger. Um, but I'll just have to play around with that because I still can't find it. Let's see. No, I can show those. And the nice thing here, um, sorry, so you can see I'm clicked here on this three surface grid. If I go here, usually on general tab, but if I click on lighting, I can change the direction of where the shading is. And so you can see as I change this, it's the horizontal location of where the sun is supposedly shining from, giving the shading. And let's see, this is the angle. Oh, okay, so we need to go all the way that way. It's too dark. But you can play around with these and see what gives you some good um, imaging of your anomalies. So you can see, it might be easier to show you actually on this side, on the, um, the flat map. Um, so first thing I just wanted to show you, because it's hard to see anything on the map now with such big symbols, is if I go here on the left hand side and I click on the symbols, you can change the size of the symbols. So if I click on the symbol tab here, and I've got a symbol size, I'll make it smaller. And I can also change the symbol type. I think I'm going to change it. I want it to be a circle. There we are. And symbol. Okay, sorry, that's a bit. So there we are. And size. Have I lost my size? Here I got there. You can see you can make it small, but then it's too small. So that's about that. So let's go back here, click on our grid, and click here on no, layer. I thought it would allow us to change the angle of the shading. No shading, but it doesn't seem to. Okay, but you can play around on this um, 3D grid here. You could go to lighting and change the direction of the sun. And you can see how it, it highlights different things. Um, let's see the model. Flat. You can see that the flat option is a lot more pixelated. And then it still shows up as quite smooth. Okay, so these are great ways of um, getting maps for your project. And I think the main aim of the project is to identify different phases or different types of Kimberlite, from what I understand. And it's quite clear to see here that, to me, this blue outline here is the outline of Kimberlite. And you've got another type here in the green, and then another type in the red. Um, maybe even it could be seen as four different smaller bits. I'm not sure. The next idea now would be to take this and to do some filtering of it.